From the beautiful and historic campus of Heritage International Ministries in Fort Mill, South Carolina, home of Morning Star Fellowship Church, Heritage International Conference Center, and Morning Star University, we bring you Prophetic Perspectives on Current Events with Rick Joyner. Now let's join Rick for insights and analysis on the important events and issues of our times. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Dave Yarns here, uh, Vice President of Morningstar Ministry, and I've got an incredible honor today of having in the studio with me Dr. Lance Walnow. Dr. Walnow, great to have you. So good to be here. Been friends for a while, and I it know. is so good to have you on the show. And Lance, I, I want to just jump right into, we're seeing so much turmoil in the world today. We're seeing so much chaos, and the Bible opens with the scene of chaos, but it's God's plan. What are you seeing? Well, now, you know, think about what you just said. You got the Genesis, Genesis 1 1. Uh, how does that go? In the beginning was the word is John's Gospel. So for Genesis, when we have creation, you got in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then right away in verse 2, the earth is without form, form and, and void, void. and yeah. darkness is over the face of the deep. And then God said, Immediately, what you know comes to mind is this is the only place in the Bible where there could be a reference to the fall of Lucifer. We have discussions about Lucifer, but what you start with is this utopia that's interrupted, almost like a beautiful Porsche is unveiled in the showroom. The next scene is you see it after it went over the cliff. It's still a Porsche, but it's all mangled and smoke's coming out of it. And the Hebrew word there is actually a, it's a rhythmic word. It's called tohu vabohu. It means the earth is without form and void. It is, it is, uh, it is an accident scene mm. with the Spirit of God hovering, almost like wow. a, a medic over a site. And then God said. So here, here's the key idea here. We as believers long for peace, and we ought to. Paul says, pray for you know, rulers that we might have peace. Contrary to what people think, Domestic peace is good for business. Right, you know, the gospel right. does best when we have the freedom to communicate the message. But the other side of it is this. All progress comes out of chaos. And so from uh, the uh, riots that Paul created, all the way back to the original upheaval in Jerusalem with the trial of Jesus, all the way through to uh, the, you know, the Reformation, and, and every upheaval in the kingdom produces chaos that God broods over and breathes new order out of. So here's the question. How many Americans, how many people that are watching this kind of a broadcast pray for years for God to do something? And what if the only way God can do it is to destabilize the status quo? Wow. And we become an obstacle because as soon as he does what he's got to do, we overreact and try to get him to stop. Well, what if what he's doing right now is actually answering the prayers we've been praying for uh, how many years for God to move in America? Maybe things have to get where they're going for the changes to happen. And I'm, I'm just thinking of our, our viewers today. If you're watching and you're, uh, I mean, I don't know where you could be hiding not to see the change that's going on around the world, but Lance, embracing change, seeing what's taking place is as part of God's plan, you know, we've been saying it this week here at uh, KBA conference, that it's not a problem, it's a promise, that God promised this uh, shaking. And I, I specifically want to say right to our audience today, I believe that God can come, use these sessions that we're talking about to bring hope, oh, yeah. to bring a sense of this is right where we need to be. Yeah, and I was asking earlier about this whole idea of hope because hope is a, is a part of the warfare. When you think about this, when Paul describes the armor of a believer, he says, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Hope is not just a disposition, it's a piece of armor. Wow, great. So, um, and when the Roman soldier, which would be the person he might be looking at when he's describing the armor in his generation, the Roman soldier had a helmet that was fitted over the head, obviously because the skull, the brain, like in uh, like like even today, from race cars to to football, the head itself has to be protected in a, in a special way, because the head affects your thought life. In other words, there is an armor wow, yeah. in the spirit yeah. that protects the way you think. 
And in the year, what do we got? The Hebrew year, like five, seven, seven, two. If you track that stuff, yeah, and people look yeah. at the Hebraic year. I mean, Jews certainly look at the Hebrew year. Uh, this this year is the year which has like the word an in it. it the core word repeated again is the eye to see. Hmm. And um, what's interesting about that is if you have a helmet on, you have a way of seeing, even shaking, that becomes optimistic. If you don't have a helmet protecting your thought life, you have a way of seeing the same headline and it produces trauma. Jesus said, because of fear of those things coming upon the earth, men's hearts will fail them. But you, talking to us, wow. when these things begin to happen, shift your focus from what's happening to looking up, meaning see what I'm doing through the situation, not what the situation is doing to you. And, and we've got some incredible topics that we're going to talk and impart these things, some practical, some theoretical, uh, but some incredible messages of hope. And we'll be right back after this message. Thanks for watching today. Uh, I've got with me Dr. Lance Wallnow, and I don't want to waste a moment of these shows. Uh, Lance, let's go back to the helmet of hope. It's the sense of whatever's coming, the headlines that we're seeing, having God's helmet of hope is all the difference in the it, world. It, I mean, it's a piece of armor. So 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8, Since we're of the day, let us be sober, having yeah. put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Now think about how the, the mind and the heart work. The helmet covers the thought life, but the breastplate protects the vital organs of the heart, which is where faith and love comes from. Mm. Love isn't a byproduct of your head. Love is a byproduct of the heart. Right. Faith is not a byproduct of the head. Faith is a byproduct of the heart. But if you don't have hope, which is a confident expectation of how things are going to end up. That's the key. Then, then your mind actually works as a competing commitment with the force of faith, and faith works by love. So let's string it together. Faith is the substance of things hoped hope for. for. Your head has to see the future with an optimistic eye for faith to rise up and materialize what, what, what hope is looking at. But since faith works by love, the last day's characteristic, and this is so insidious, the last day's characteristic is the love of many growing cold because of those things that are coming upon the earth, lawlessness increasing. The whole, I mean, look at this. I'm sorry to put it this bluntly. These aren't the views of necessarily the Morning Star Network, but when I look at the stupidity of riots in America right now, mm. we have the best standard of living in the world. No one's going hungry. If they want to be outside in the winter, they can, or, or they can go inside because we got hot, you know, we've got hot and cold running water, we've got food, we've got heat, we've got all the, all the necessities to support us in life. And even still, at the thought that we might lose something, we've got people that are ready to enter into strife and rebellion and, 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 and an occupational movement and confront police. That's without a crisis. That's just the dialogue of a crisis. And what it tells you is the love of many grows cold unless you have a worldview that says, oh, look, another uprising, which means you have to have a worldview that puts a helmet on you that expects lawlessness, warfare, and increasing stress, and somehow has the ability to interpret that in a way that increases your excitement and your devotion and your love and your faith. And that I can, and I could do, we can do that today. But it re really amazing. requires you have a template that says, you know what, this is not going to look pretty, but it's going to look beautiful when it's over. Like a woman in labor. Mm. Any woman that's ever had to deliver a baby knows it's not going to become increasingly enjoyable. It's going to become increasingly uncomfortable until the baby comes out. And when the baby comes out, we forget the pain for joy that a child is born. Hope focuses on what's being birthed out of the uh, trauma. Uh, an absence of hope focuses on the contractions and the discomfort. Mm. This is vital information. It's in, in light of what's been coming out in the news, in light of what we're seeing, it's vital. It is the essential thing to have our mind fixed on the hope of God, to look at the problems that are coming in throughout the world as opportunity, to look at them as the promises of God, 
Lance, I want to talk a little bit and get into some sessions where we can take, make things practical for people. Many that have been watching are saying, okay, I feel, I sense in my spirit that this is my time, and I believe that's a God thing. But how do we get from here to that place that God has destined for us? And we'll talk about that. We'll be right back after this commercial. <laughs> 